The 2024 Kookaburra. Many of you have seen it. Many of you love it. Many of you have questions about it. Many of you may want to buy one if you have not already done so. It is currently selling for $30 or $40 on eBay. So is it right for you? Find out today why it should be on the culture of currency. The Kookaburra is regarded as one of the most successful collector series in bullion coins. Starting in 1990, this series hit the market to showcase the fauna of Australia, adding to their popular kangaroo. In 2018, a change was made to add an extra nine to the purity of the bullion series as it went from three nines to four nines. The series has a new design every year, which is great for collectors, but also comes in different denominations of 1 ounce, 2 ounce, 10 ounces, and even 1 kilo. The success of this series also paved the way for many other bullion coins as we know and love, such as the Koala, Wedge-tailed Eagle, and as recent as the Quokka series. A little bit about the kookaburra, there are currently four kookaburra species, only one of which is known to be the classic laughing kookaburra, according to my research. Two of the species, the laughing and the blue-winged kook, live in Australia, whereas the other two are known to live in Papua New Guinea. But don't you worry if you live outside of these bounds, as kookaburras are related to one of my favorite birds, which are found throughout the world, the kingfisher. There are many varieties of kingfishers, each with beautiful vocalizations. Most are smaller, but their shape and plumage is quite similar, so I recommend that you learn the call of the species near you so that you can hear it in the countryside and think upon your own silver kookaburra coin. As we see on the 2024 version of the kookaburra, we have an interesting image of our feathered friend carrying off a snake. When I first saw this, I had questions as to the validity, and after some research, I can verify the kookaburra does consume snakes. In fact, they often smash the snake on hard objects to break the bones so that they can digest the snake easier and also obviously kill it. With a 4-inch beak, this must be quick work. As to the validity of our image, though it would be likely that a kook would prey on a snake, the odds of a kook carrying a live snake in this manner is unlikely as the snake is grasped in the middle, meaning it can still strike at the bird. The most probable situation would be the snake already being dead or carrying the snake by the head as it would then protect the bird. Either way, it's a beautiful image and an amazing piece to add to my collection. Let's go ahead and place it on our 60 point scale to see if it has our elite status within it. When we look at the obverse, we have the Dan Thorn Effigy of King Charles. He has no crown as for some reason, unless they are the coronation versions, the male monarchs like to show their hair off, whereas most female English monarchs like to accessorize. Not sure why this is, so if you know, put it down in the comments. It is a fine-tuned image as we have come to know and love from the Perth Mint. Quality is always very high with the Perth Mint, but it does lack some of the pizzazz that other coins offer that incorporate more than just the monarch on the obverse. I therefore scored an 8. This reverse is one of my favorites in this amazing series, hence why the trigger was pulled so quickly in getting one for my collection. We have the Kookaburra with wings outstretched as it takes its to-go order across a rocky canyon. Sean Rogers, the designer of this image, really did a great job depicting a flying bird, which is no easy task. I really love the new direction the Perth Mint is taking within this series, and having identifiable fonts in the legend and suppression of the words that are a little bit less important, like the year, weight, and purity, really helps balance it out. This shows that the designated imagery that inspires the coin is just as valuable as the silver itself. I also love that in this year's coin, it hosts a privy mark of sorts with the P125 designation, which denotes the 125th anniversary of the Perth Mint. Happy birthday to the Perth Mint, by the way. This is as good of a reverse as we could ask for, and it scores a 10. Mintage is our next category, and it is the Achilles Hill for this amazing series. There are 500,000 of these minted, which is quite high for a collector who likes lower mintage, but is still miles better than a world standard like an American Silver Eagle or Maples. It scores a 3 on our scale. It should be of note, however, that there is a fantastic colorized version, which not only has a cool privy featuring the Appleman, highlighting the World's Fair coin in Germany, but also has a low mintage of 2500. 
Too bad this is not that coin. When it comes to cultural significance, we are at a perfect 10 as this kookaburra has become almost as iconic as the kangaroo in iconography of a nation, in this case Australia. Now for collectability. We know that this may be one of the most sought after collectible series of all world bullion. I think between this and the Lunar series, we would have a successful business model. It is the king for collectors and a champion of interest in world coins. It scores a bold 10, which brings us to our last graded area, which is uniqueness. When a species is really only captured in and around Australia, it makes it pretty easy to be the only place to bring it to the world. This series, starting in 1990, really opened the door for what could be collectible bullion silver in the bullion industry. It showed what was possible and that if you were willing to put in the work and make a quality item, people would be willing to buy it. Only one or two nations like the Solomon Islands and Malawi have attempted a bullion version of the kookaburra and none have had lasting overwhelming success. This therefore brings the kook to score a 10 as its artwork is always changing so we always find a unique look. This brings us to our final thoughts and score. Flying across the line at a 51 out of 60, the kookaburra escapes its high mintage issues which is a true testament to its quality and focus. Honestly, I always worry if a large minted bullion coin will be in the elite status as the mintage can really put a damper in our 60 point scale. Luckily this one survived making the elite status and also meaning that yes, I do think that every single collector should have at least one kookaburra and this 2024 version is a great place to start. Thank you so much for watching and as always, please remember to stay classy and current with the culture of currency.